Hi right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise, somewhere in the high Sierras of California on a gorgeous Wednesday morning in the end times, July 7th, 2016. So this rant, you can decide what it has to do with the collapse of a planet. It has more to do than you might think if you stick around and listen. And so today we're gonna to do something that I probably need to do more of on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And that's bring you at least my twisted interpretation of one of the lessons of my old buddy and still Humpty Dumpty Tribe hero, Carlos Castaneda. Carlos Castaneda, who, uh, I was into Carlos Castaneda in the, light, in the late 90s for several years, read every one of those books three times through. And I'm not gonna get off on a side rant about uh, whether Carlos Castaneda was a lion sack of shit or not. I'm just saying I still recommend that you attend to the writings of Carlos Castaneda, flawed as they may be, uh, for your own spiritual development. It is Carlos Castaneda, not quite as much as Terrence McKenna, who got me sitting in this chair with my little dog. But anyway, we're going to talk about in today's rant, Carlos Castaneda, uh, you know, who talked about the teachings of his, his buddy, uh, Don Juan Matus. And this is the lesson on petty tyrants petty tyrants coming from the book the fire from within and talking about how warriors how, how to develop your spiritual warrior skills one of the best teachers you will ever encounter uh, along your path are petty tyrants now petty tyrants and again, this is way oversimplifying. You will, uh, you will need to Google petty tyrants and read The Fire From Within uh, to get the full grasp of, of this concept. Petty tyrants are, are, they come in several classifications, but, but planet eaters are a, a classic case of petty tyrants. We, so I'm gonna look at like, like First, there's your regular petty tyrant. A petty tyrant is, is usually a man, but it can also be a woman. Anyone who knew my dear sweet ex-wife knows that petty tyrants can also be female. A petty tyrant uh, would be an example, would be, oh, I don't know, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, uh, Hillary Clinton, Dick Cheney, would certainly, uh, Henry Kissinger, these are just basically evil, evil death mongers that they're just, uh, they, they are so despicable on every level, but they actually have the ability to wield some power over, over an entire planet. They are planet eaters. Planet eaters are one example of, of petty tyrants. But those aren't the petty tyrants I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about today. So then we get to a smaller group uh, of petty tyrants <clears throat> uh, that Don Juan talked about, which are the little petty tyrants. A little petty tyrant would be someone, oh, I don't know, who maybe some guy in China running a sweatshop who has control over maybe 5,000 little slaves that just wields just uh, autocratic control over, uh, you know, over a good chunk of humanity, uh, a, good, a good chunk, a number of people. That is your, your little petty tyrant. But the, the number one petty tyrant that we're gonna talk about in this rant is what Don Juan referred to as the small fry petty tyrant or a term I particularly like, if you don't like the term small fry, it is the teeny weeny 
petty tyrant. And the teeny weeny petty tyrant is just, again, to oversimplify, is just an asshole. It's a fucking asshole. If you're talking about a guy, it's an asshole. If you're talking about a woman, she's just, just a fucking bitch. It's assholes and bitches. They're the teeny weeny petty tyrant are, are just the people who, just the quote, average small fries who, who come into a, a spiritually evolving warrior's life and, and, and torment them to distraction as, as, uh, as Don Juan would say and, and, and the object of the warrior is to not let these assholes and bitches torment you to distraction that he that Don Juan would say that a, a petty tyrant these teeny weeny petty tyrants crossing your path are some of the greatest teachers you will ever have because if you can survive the antics of, of a fucking petty tyrant you can survive anything the universe throws at you if, if when you when you when you come across these people when they're thrown in your path your challenge is basically to, to figure out how to deal with them without sinking down to their level because if you try to meet them on their own level, you, you have failed. You, you have let them eat your power if, if you let them get to you. And, and the way that I try to handle petty tyrants is just to avoid them. I've done a pretty good job of avoiding petty tyrants, not counting my own dear sweet ex-wife. It was a seven-year a uh, test of, of a teeny weeny petty tyrant. But petty tyrants are usually come in the forms of, of authority figures, either, either like a cop, like, like some sort of cop that you deal with, which usually only tests your mettle for however long you're dealing with a fucking cop. And more likely, it's uh, having a boss uh, as uh, as a, a, a having a petty tyrant for a boss, but at least with those petty tyrants, they do have one redeeming feature, which is the paycheck. So you're more likely to put up with a petty tyrant because at least you have a, a a paycheck at the end of the deal, and you better believe I have put up with some petty tyrants. Uh, I will tell you the story one day of. Uh, uh, of the Spuds McKenzie episode in my life where I got a triple gold star in dealing with petty tyrants before I ever heard of uh, Charles Castaneda where the, the object of the, of the petty tyrant is, is basically to, to hoist them on their own petard. Let them turn their own pettiness against them. Don't, don't fight a petty tyrant by becoming petty yourself, but figure out a way, and this can take years, took three years in my case, to turn the petty tyrant's pettiness against them and let them bring themselves down. And I'll tell you that story someday. But today, what I want to talk about and, and this Don Juan never talks about. It's not so much the petty tyrants that cross your path. It's dealing with petty tyrants that cross the paths of people you love, your, your friends, family members, loved ones, when they encounter a petty tyrant. And, and you watch their entire lives get destroyed by these fucking idiots. And my guess is more often than not, it, it's a woman's life uh, d just watching a friend of yours, just watching all of the power get sucked out of their lives by, by these idiots. 
Uh, I'm sure every one of us ha- has run into this. And sure, they, they, the, the, these fuckers aren't directly in your path, but to the extent that they have been put in the path of someone you love and want to spend time with in your life, but you have to deal with the petty tyrant in their lives in order to enjoy the company uh, of your friend being having their energy sucked out by this energy vampire. You know, this is where I guess I'm failing. So this, uh, and, and this, you know, always talk about what you know. So I'm just using the example of I, th- this, this petty tyrant came into my life, well actually came into a friend of mine's life, I believe it was 19 or 20 years ago. It was, it was right in the, my Carlos Castaneda years where I was studying the concept of petty tyrants and, and, and learning how to cope with tedi- petty tyrants when the universe gave me what Don Juan would call the perfect petty tyrant. The perfect petty tyrant is someone completely lacking in redeemable virtues. I mean, who offers nothing to anybody, who is completely, who is so fucking clueless, petty, they're usually passive aggressive, would certainly be in there, Uh, duplicitous, lying, thieving, cheating, sacks of shit. I mean, just completely irredeemable. That you hear this expression of useless as tits on a boar, or you might hear the expression, this guy could fuck up a wet dream. Well, the guy I'm talking about, forget those, he is way beyond useless as tits on a boar or that that he is that he could fuck up a wet dream i mean the guy has nothing to offer anybody he is just he's just i I mean you're in the room with this fucking asshole for 10 minutes and, and and you have to, to go take a shower and scrub yourself with a loofah sponge for 30 minutes to just to get the slime off of you. And, and, and the guy, I mean, it would be funny. This character on some level is absolutely hilarious. I, I mean, he's, he's a character right out of a, a, a Woody Allen movie. Uh, William Faulkner wrote about this guy, if you remember the Snopes family uh, from, from Woody Allen. Uh, you know, the, he would be funny, and, and, and he is on one level. He, he is such a, just a walking bundle of fuck-ups that, uh, that on one level he's downright hilarious, but what's not funny about the guy is, is that this friend of mine, uh, again, I will call her Lulu, uh, is, it, it has somehow uh, uh, allowed this fucker to attach himself like a leech, like a 200 pound leech to uh, her life. And this has been going on for going on 20 years. That, that she has let this, this guy into her personal power. And you got to understand that, that Lulu is, is not a clueless moron. I mean, she's a successful businesswoman. I mean, she's very intelligent, articulate, articulate college educated, aware, uh, successful business person. Uh, owns a nice home, uh, two or three nice homes, uh, I believe, that she owns. Uh, She, on every other level, pretty much in her life, could be considered what I I believe the term is self-actualized. That, you know, that that she's, she's got it together, but somehow 
she has this one blind spot. We all have one blind spot. Hers, hers are men. Now she's had some petty tyrants in her past who I would have called petty tyrants until this fucker came along in her life. And uh, so, yeah, I, you know, so here I was in the middle of my Castaneda years when this fucker comes into her life. And, and, and from the first time I laid eyes on this guy, I, I mean, talking about reading auras, reading the human egg, he's got this real... I would say like a diarrhea brown aura around him. He's just yuck. Like like being in his presence it is being like slathered in diarrhea is, is all I can say. And uh, I'm, I'm just thinking in the early years, I'm, I'm talking, you know, going back to uh, the 1990s, thinking, uh, surely, surely, this shit isn't gonna last. And that woman is gonna pull her own brain out of her ass and, and understand the, what this guy is doing to her. And, I mean, this man has lost her friends. It pretty, pretty much uh, destroyed uh, my friendship with her. Uh, he, has, he has destroyed her social life. He's affected her economically and financially. His bumbling around. Uh, I, I have never met any other human being who knows this person who has one nice thing to say about him. Virtually everybody that I know, uh, I mean, just like a common comment, that's like uh, when I was up here last year and I mentioned Lulu uh, to a former friend of hers, the first question out of her former friend's mouth is Lulu still hanging around that creep that's what he is. He's just creepy. He's just yuck. I, I mean, it, 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 there, there is no newspaper account that I will be reading in a few years that uh, about some, uh, some sick, twisted crime being committed by this guy. That would surprise me one bit. I just hope it doesn't involve my friend. And... So anyway, uh, over the past 20 years, uh, you know, Lulu has occasionally gotten and rebuilt enough of her personal power so she'll kick this fucker out of her life. She'll kick him out of her life. I think she actually got him thrown in jail one time, uh, you know, getting restraining orders against him and all this. But then, uh, as is so true of addicts, and, and people, particularly women, in abusive relationships after she ha has balked up the power to, to get him out of her life time after time after time, she lets him back in. And, uh, he, you know, he lies to her. I mean, everything out of his mouth is a fucking lie. He steals from her. Just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I like for instance, I gave uh, I gave Lulu uh, this present. All right, I don't need to get into the deal anyway. So I personally bought a gift for Lulu when I was here last year, and and the son of a bitch stole it from her. And even when she confronted him with it, he denied it, saying this is called gaslighting. So. She accuses him correctly of stealing a gift that Hambone gave her, and then he denies it and, and calls her crazy. Look up the concept of gaslighting. It, it is one of the many ways that these abusive, petty tyrants suck the energy and power out of their victims is by turning it back on them. And uh, so, I, and he downright cheats on her. I mean, he goes around and, and, and just pretty much in the open fucks other women. And she takes him back and takes him back. And, 
there, there's some clueless moron thinking they're going to take my campsite, I guess. Please don't get out of your car in the middle of this rant. Oh my God, now I've got someone in the middle of this rant. Uh, I'm going to be leaving in about an hour. Oh, are you? Yeah, if, if you want this spot in about an hour. So, this is the last campsite on the, on the trail. Yeah, that's what I've noticed, man. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. So, just give me a few minutes to finish up here and pack up, and I'll... Uh... Yeah, do you mind if we just park over here somewhere? I guess not. Yeah, we're not going to bother you or anything. All right. All right, yeah, we'll just, we'll just park and explore a little bit. All right, it's really... The, the trail is on down. You can still drive down about a quarter mile, and the trail starts. It's beautiful down there. But there's no campsites down there, are there? Not that you can reach in that car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's our problem. But you can still drive for it anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Uh -huh. So anyway, uh, it, you, wh where can you go to have a rant? So I anyway, uh, so what what happened a couple of years ago with this guy? Y y you know, I, I've I've mentioned this to several of our common friends. You know, and over and over and over again, you know, I'm basically suggesting that we need to have some kind of intervention for Lulu that, you know, like, like friends have with their friends on heroin. Uh, you know, that we need to deprogram her. And over and over again, every time I bring this up, like Hambone, this is none of our business that Lulu is going to have to see the error of her ways uh, and, and figure it out herself. And so two years ago I was out here and, and, and bumped in uh, to, this, the, to this motherfucker back in her life after I thought that, that she had gotten rid of the guy. She was too chicken shit to admit that she had taken him back. And he was back in her life. So I basically, what I decided two years ago, which is, which is a common trait of people, that I, I was going to blame the victim. That every sadist which is a, a uh, which, you know, a petty tyrant certainly is, is a sadist. That every sadist needs a masochist in their life. So I decided that this was at least 50% Lulu's fault. That she was obviously a, a, a masochist dealing with a, uh, a masochist dealing with a sadist. And so I just decided I would, uh, I would uh, blame the victim. It, it is so easy to blame the victim. You, you know, the, the first time an abused woman gets abused by a man, you blame him. The second time it happens, you blame her. And as far as I know, I don't think I'm accusing this guy of being physically abusive. As far as I know, he doesn't beat her up, at least anywhere that leaves marks. Uh, so I just got into the blame the victim mode, like, like, like all of Lulu's other friends, that, that it's her fault. That, it, that if she cannot understand what she's doing with her life... Uh, then, 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 then it's her fault. It's the masochist's fault for, for putting up with the sadist. And that actually carried me through. So I came back out here last year, still in this mindset, and then what actually happened is, is, is this, is this uh, dude, this uh, teeny-weeny little petty tyrant, actually invited me to uh, help him work on his... Uh, on uh, on his cabin up here in the Sierras, not too far from here. The way he found this cabin, by the way, is he was it's one of these women that he was fucking behind Lulu's back that he met on Craigslist or no telling where. Anyway, I guess the this woman that he was that that he was uh, fucking cheating on Lulu. Uh, I guess is the one who turned him on to this cabin. So I guess she spotted a clueless moron who had more money than brains when she found him. So anyway, it, this guy went and, and 
talking about fucking up a wet drain, he went and dumped like fifty thousand dollars into this tumbled down abandoned old shack on, on the side of a busy road up here in the Sierras. I, I mean, oh hush, yeah, you you, you talk. This is him talking about Clueless Orange. Uh, so anyway, so uh, so this dude has has already uh, pissed away like 50 grand into this place and, and actually invited me to work for him. And so for the first time in history, uh, this guy, this, this teeny weeny petty tyrant actually had a redeeming feature. It had never happened. He had a redeeming feature, meaning uh, the $15 he was paying me to uh, to put lipstick on a pig, trying to turn a, a, a sow's ear <laughs> into a silk purse. And uh, so I actually lived for close to two weeks with this guy. And it was great training on the, on the uh, spiritual path, uh, having this guy actually be my boss for uh and, and living with this guy but the fact that i wasn't dealing with the, this toxic relationship between him and lulu made, made it somehow bearable and i and i think don juan would have been proud of me that when when i was on one-on-one -on -one with this teeny weeny petty tyrant i i think I handled him pretty well, uh, but what I cannot handle, and I'm and I'm still failing, is is handling this toxic relationship between uh, the, this asshole and and Lulu, and, and and when I say toxic relationship, my God, anybody knew who knew the uh, the marriage between me and the teeny weeny petty tyrant in my life for seven years who was familiar with that toxic uh, marriage that I was involved in. And my God, compared to the, the toxic relationship between these two, my own marriage, uh, you know, it was a Sunday walk in the park that I got the hell out of that marriage at a point way before uh, the point that it's reached. I, I mean, you walk into a room with uh, this uh, sadistic, masochistic dynamic going on between this, uh, between this teeny weeny petty tyrant and Lulu. I mean, the energy is it, literally like falling face first into a pile of shit. And this is in Lulu's own home that she owns, that she's let this guy take over her home. He actually, this guy, a perfect example of this passive aggressive asshole, he actually wrote out and posted in her own kitchen the rules, the rules that she is supposed to follow in her own house and she didn't even rip it up it's still posted in her own kitchen of her own house the rules according to this little uh, dictator in her own house so what happened this year i i spent about a week uh dealing with uh, this toxic relationship and, and and it was getting tough it was getting tough. Fortunately, I was there with another friend who was telling me uh, each night, you know, she's one of these blame the victim people. So each night she was saying, Hambone, calm down. It's only for a couple of more days. Uh, it's none of your business. This is Lulu's business. It is not your place to, it, it was mainly, when uh, I, I was up on the ladder, uh, when he was denying to Lulu's face 
when Lulu was talking about this gift that I gave her that he stole from her and she was denying, he was denying and gaslighting her and, and, and I was sitting up uh, on the ladder with a fucking hammer in one hand and a screwdriver in the other and this fucking little maggot what was eight feet away from me. I don't know if he didn't think I could hear uh, him or what. This, this was a test of a spiritual warrior not to come off that fucking ladder and, and put that goddamn hammer upside this fucking, uh, this fucker's head. You, you know, and interestingly, you got to understand that I have never had a confrontation with this guy. This guy, this other thing about petty tyrants, he, he's way too much of a fucking coward to be a man. He's a spineless ballless little coward on top of everything else. So he has never had a direct uh, problem with me, but, but it was clear to me that he was on to me somehow. He had to be picking up on my energy that I was ready to, to put a fucking hammer uh, through, through his little uh, spineless face. Uh, you know... And so somehow he picked up, so he waited for me to leave. So right when we were leaving, because I was still thinking maybe that I could get a re redeemable uh, feature out of this guy and, and maybe make some more money out of this clueless moron pouring more money in, into this uh, money pit, a little uh, hovel up in the mountains that he had bought. And... I noticed that it wasn't going to happen, and so right when I was leaving, I basically confirmed that with him, that there was going to be no money, and so we're, we're about an hour away, so he waits for me to leave, and what he does, and this guy's got my phone number, my email address, what he starts doing is texting my friend, my female friend, who he, he believes likes him or something. So what he starts doing is sending these real toxic texts to my friend on her cell phone talking trash about me to my friend. He, he doesn't have the fucking balls to uh, to talk to me, to, to call me, to send me a text, or send me an email. You, you see what how they work. Since he's too much of a fucking coward to, to, to confront me man to man, what he starts doing is trying to is trying to draw my other female friends into his little web of diarrhea, drama, uh, these, these little dramas uh, about what a fucking asshole I am trying to poison me uh, with my friend. And don't, don't worry, my friend is way uh, too spiritually evolved. I mean, of course, she just laughed this off. And, and, and of course, I can only imagine what Lulu uh, was suffering after I was out of the scene when they got back together, the, the amount of trash talking uh, that, that, that this fucker unleashed on Lulu, judging by these toxic little texts that, that he was sending to my friend, who, who, for the record, despises him as much as anybody ever. I mean, the guy just grosses her out. But since my friend is a is a little more spiritually evolved than I am, and she's not a friend of Lulu's, so this guy means absolutely nothing to her. Uh, there's nothing, uh, you know. Uh, so here I sit. So I just, you know, after this little event. So a few days ago, I just sent an email to Lulu saying, you know, basically, for all intents and purposes, as long as she is involved with this, that the friendship is over. That watching her being destroyed on, on every level, on, as I say, 
maybe he's not physically beating her, but watching her just being emotionally, psychologically, mentally, and above all, spiritually, uh, just, just having her energy sucked out by this vampire that I'm done with the friendship. And it pisses me off that I have to be put in the position by this teeny weeny little petty tyrant that, that I have to, and I've been friends with this woman uh, since 1986, so it's 30 years, that I have to end a 30-year friendship with someone who is, who is very important to me in my life simply because uh, I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm afraid that the next time I see this little, uh, th this little irredeemable little fuckwad that I'm not going to put a fucking hammer uh, through his face. You know? So I guess on that level, uh, while I, while I, I, I'm succeeding on the spiritual path pretty well, I do a pretty good job of dealing with petty tyrants. <clears throat> I don't know what to do about this. Don Juan uh, d never talks about this. I have no advice from him. All of the advice is how do you do deal with one in your path? Well, he's not exactly in my path. Uh, so my two choices are either to continue with the friendship and deal with him as an aspect of the friendship or end the friendship until she gets it through her fucking clueless mind uh, about, about what, the, what this fucker is doing to her. And uh, so anyway, if anybody has any advice I am this is your old uh, spiritual warrior seeking advice from other people who have dealt with this successfully if anyone listening to this rant has been through this in their own lifetime watching a uh, one of these teeny weeny petty tyrants destroy the life uh, uh, of one of their friends or loved ones, how did you deal with it? Because I've tried for 20 years to deal with this friendship with this, with, with this guy and, uh, and, and while I've done an okay job, uh, I, I've reached the end of it. As I told her, I'm done with him. I'm done. Uh, with his teeny weeny little petty tyrant in my life, I'm walking the fuck away. But by walking away from him, I'm walking away from her. So uh, send me your advice, and I would greatly appreciate it as we all work together to become spiritual warriors. But with that, I've got to wrap up today's Carlos Castaneda Don Juan lesson about teeny weeny petty tyrants. And uh, I'm going to go take a walk through the woods and head off to a hot spring as your old doomsday tourist uh, figures out what the universe has in store for him sending me up here to the mountains on my modern day John Muir trek through the Sierras. Bye guys. Let the dog. Let's go for a walk. Go for a walk in the woods.